Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn. It's your boy Cash. And today we will be continuing some side quests and then possibly the main story. Um, we have to go and find Talana because uh, they went after Red Maw, uh, her and Assis. And we have to, uh, you know, see what's going on. Now, this is down all the way in the jungle area. Of course, next to a stalker site. It's always beautiful. Love that. Um, nothing has changed since the last time we played. I have... Oh. <clears throat> hmm. Anyways, um, nothing has changed since the last time we played. I now have full rattler stuff. That's great. Love that. Um, same upgrades. However, I do have three skill points. So I think we're going to grab Combat Override Plus, which increases the time a machine remained overridden indefinitely. Um, all we need now is three more to get Call Mount Plus. That'll be pretty dope to get. But let us go ahead and head down and uh, see what's going on. Oh, shite. People. That ain't good. How Super much did sneaky. Assis pay you? The past must be outlanders that were to Nana. Looks like Assis hired some folks. Wow! Fast as fuck, boy. Watch the flanks! I gotta try it. I don't know what they did. Oh, Jesus. There we go. They're all fucking dead. Don't you ever step to my sister like that. I mean, she's not actually my sister, but... Good. Good. I'd have to ditch Fuck. something. Good. Good. We love those. Thank you. I should have seen this coming. Of course <clears throat> he would hire men to keep me from Red Maw. They died for his pride. Where is Assis now? He's gone after Red Maw. This way. Hurry. All right. Why is Assis going after Red Maw alone? Vanity. He doesn't want to share credit for the kill with his brush. My sponsor did the same. Went after Red Maw alone out of pride. Even though he knew we needed to unseat Assis. It's freaking beautiful, man. I'm not sure where Cease and Red Maw went from. I can follow their tracks. You can follow their tracks. I'm amazing like that. This way. Red Maw destroyed these trees. There he is, Red Maw. I see he's holding a 
is over. Was, was holding his own. Well, we have our work cut out for us. Floated in the air. By the sun, we did it. Definitely, uh, definitely murked them. Should we, should we check on the seas? Hello there, beautiful. We make a great team. And now, you're the Sunhawk. About that. Oh, what? Oh, he's still alive. Talana, he's still alive. Out of the way, Nora Filth. You're done. The Lodge is finally free of your influence. I kept it alive. In dark times. No. You buried it. Along with my father's memory. I should have... I should have... I should have let you fight Redmore first. To soften him up. Yeah. Rip. Here lies the Sunhawk of the Hunter's Lodge. It's almost a shame. After all that, you're gonna weep for him. Oh, no. I just wish I could have seen his face when I succeeded him. <sighs> okay, then. Meet me back at the Hunter's Lodge, if you have the time. I have a feeling the new Sunhawk wants to welcome you. <clears throat> well, shit. All right, well. Let us... I don't think I really knocked anything off of him. No. <clears throat> Alright. Let us go back to the Hunter's Lodge. You know, I prefer to run. Hawk Bradavin Khan Padish. Cherished brother. And Sunhawk Talavad Khan Padish. Beloved father. Let their memory and sacrifice be a beacon for all hunters, all Who people, to follow. Who are you talking to? Nobody was even looking at you. The hell? Oh. Record of Red Mall 2. Amendment to the Record of Red Mall by inquiring 
Jan Dindeman, historian in residence at the Hunter's Lodge. In time, all creatures fall, all legends fade away. Such it was with Red Maul, deadliest of Thunderjaws. In the summer of the third year of the reign of the Sun King of Odd, Sunhawk Assis received word of a sighting and set out after the beast. Talana, Hawk of the Lodge, went soon after, quickly followed by her thrush, Aloy of the Nora. Fearing Talana might take Red Maw first and thus supplant him as Sunhawk, Assis resorted to treachery, laying a trap for the Hawk. Nine mercenaries ambushed her, but aided by her thrush, Talana defeated them. Six shot, three blasted. Okay. Hawk and Thrush continued after Red Maul, arriving just as the legendary monster took Sunhawk Assis out of the fight. Lash of the Tail. Working together, the two women finally defeated Red Maul in a fight for the ages. Alas, the wounds that Assis sustained were mortal, crushed internal organs, evidence of bowel failure, and he did not live to see Talana take his place as Sunhawk. So it ends the record of Red Maul, most murderous of machines. Look, a memorial to my father and brother, and all the men who died in the Sunring. You made this possible, Aloy. Thank you. So, what's it like to be Sunhawk? It feels like sunrise after a long night. <laughs> I'm in your debt. You'll always have a special home here, if you want it. What happens now, in the Lodge? As Sunhawk, I've made sure we invite prospective members based on ability and drive, regardless of Karja blood. This Lodge will be a stale bastion of the old regime no longer. What was that prayer you were saying when I first came in? I didn't hear all of it. Oh, great sun. Make treaty with the moon to give our fallen quiet rest. Burnish them with the armor of your brazen heat. Give them shafts of sunlight for spears. Illuminate the path to the skies for each one of them. Hawk Gravid Khan Morza. Hawk Sarav Khan Pir. Hawk Yusalin Khan Jagir. Hawk Kulasiv Khan Savali. Hawk Bradavin Khan Padish. Cherished brother and son Hawk Talavad Khan Padish, beloved father. Let their memory and sacrifice be a beacon for all hunters, all people to follow. Well, congratulations, Talana. I should get going. Thank you, Aloy, despite the Nora. <laughs> <laughs> May you always take your prey. Ooh. All right. Well, we completed the Hunter's Lodge quest line. That's dope. Um, we did level up once from that. Pretty, pretty nice. And we got some, some treasure. All right. Well, <clears throat> it seems to me that the next quest would be the main quest, uh, helping Aaron. However. There is a quest here that I want to go and grab. I think that was the only one, right? E oh, that, and then there was one back here, too. I want to grab that one as well. So let me teleport over there. We'll go talk to that person, and then we'll grab the other one, and we'll continue Aaron's quest line. Oh, oh shit. What if my mount wanted to enter? Ah, machine riding Nora with a special spear. How lucky to come across you. I have a proposal. Come closer. Call me Fernand. Hello, Fernand. Okay, Fernand. What's your proposal? During the reign of that idiot Karja King, outlanders often hid items of value from raiders. Well, I found one. What is it? A relic. From the old ones. You probably would understand it better than I do. Unfortunately, it's too high for me to reach. Uh huh, and you want me to get it for you? What a brilliant plan! You're a much better climber than I am, to be sure. Get it? 
Bring it back, and we'll split the proceeds. How about I see what it is first? That works, too. Hey, Fernand. My eyes are up here. I'm looking at your spear. It's magnificent, but how does it work? You stick the pointy end into the machine. Yes, but how does it turn foe into friend? It's simple, really. Yes? You wouldn't understand. Uh -uh. What do you do, exactly? I'm a trader of fine tinkerings. I buy low, sell high. But in this case, you wouldn't be buying. Sometimes I find tinkerings as well. I see. Let's say I'm interested. What do I need to do? The relic rests on the rise of Dusk Mesa. Bring it to me at the Meridian Docks, and we will both profit. We'll see about that. All right. So that's an errand. Oh, there's another quest here. Hmm. Actually, a nice area. Quick save. Can't see. I'm blind. Leave me alone, girl. Can't you see I'm searching the water? O okay, what's wrong? Has someone fallen in? No. Have you seen a girl of about 17 and... I can't even say it. Are you afraid she jumped to her death? I don't know. Elida. Uh, my only daughter. She's gone. Who else is searching for her? I demanded the guards look for her, but I can't put my hope in them. They say girls run off all the time at this age. Not my Alita. I've reached out to her friends, but they say they haven't seen her in weeks. Weeks! How could I not know? But they will look for her. I've searched everywhere, and then I thought maybe she might be... here, in the water. By the sun! Where did you last see her? Just last night, in the house. She seemed... better. Was she ill? She seemed withdrawn. Sad. So I was pleased when she wanted to go out in the garden. That's the last I saw of her. Has she done or said anything unusual? She's been like a different person. She used to be such a happy girl, playing in the dirt with the boys. What changed? I don't know. She disagrees with me about everything. Hates the ceasefire. Thinks we never should have fought the war to begin with. It's been a month since I've seen her smile. She spends so much time in her room. I should have paid more attention. Did something happen during the war that upset her? The war upset us all. The cruelty, the mad sun king, the blood on the streets. When Edaman's men fled, they stormed through here. There's a ceasefire now, of course, but Alita broods about it more than ever. It bothers her that our people are so divided. I'm a good tracker. <clears throat> I can look for her. Where did you last see her? In our garden. Please, maybe you'll find something I missed. I'll do my best. May the sun light your way. Alright. It's a new side quest. Interesting. Alright, so that was all the quests there. There's definitely some, like, settlements that I haven't discovered. Like this one for... Uh... Just to name one. I do want to go to all the settlements to make sure we get all the quests. Uh, here's another one, but that requires me to uh, do a quest for that one. But I'm pretty sure I've been to all the ones over here. Ye yeah. Yeah, we've been to all the ones over here. Um, but a new quest did pop up here. Let's grab that one. Warchief Sona, you're reinforcing Mother's Crown? If the Nora are to weather another attack by the Metal Devil, we must brace our defenses. Still, the concern is not yours. You're not mine to command. 
You can still ask, War Chief. Very well. We need to harvest lance horns. They carry chill water, and their lenses have many uses also. I've already hunted lance horns. I should have the parts you seek. I'm not hey. surprised, but I am grateful. I also need the watchtowers stocked with signal arrows. Take these to Orn's Tower in the south. If you would. Alright, so that's an errand. Now, what I want to do real quick is I want to run to all the settlements we haven't been to outside of the ones that I can't go to because of the quest. Uh, and I want to make sure we have all the side quests that have appeared. Um, and then we'll continue with the main story. So, we'll be right back. Okay. Oh, there is a quest here. Talk to this person. <laughs> I've calluses older than you. I have calluses enough if you want to test me. <laughs> she sparks. I believe it, flame hair. Petra Forge woman. Uh, Aloy, machine hunter. Hmm, machine hunter, eh? Huh. I could have a use for you. Straight of it is, we're being muscled out of our own claim. That's why I've been working on this scrap-spitting beast. It's a dispute settler. What is this place, Petra? The Free Heap. Free because we answer to no one but ourselves, the metal, and the dust storms. And the heaps back there. A scrapyard piled by Osram past from the leavings of the old ones. Breathe it in. Get the smell in you. Smoke. And sweat. Living in the trees has dulled your senses. I can taste five metals just in my spit. So all this scrap was left by the ancients. Was it a battlefield? Hmm, stockpile maybe, or a rubbish heap. Packed so tight it all fused together. Those old ones tossed away more than we'll ever know. But don't you want to know? To understand what it all meant? Nah, some delvers spend their whole lives trying to make sense of it. Not me. What it means is there's good smelting here. Yeah, don't need to understand a forest to chop down the trees for your arrows. If you did, you'd know Ridgewood makes better shafts. <laughs> Careful, you'll scald your tongue with that fire. I don't pine for the old ones. They had their time. Their works are finished. All their inventions are under mountains now, rust on bones. My sisters and brothers of the Forge will make a new world. So you're a Forge woman? You run the forge and the town, too. The town is the forge, and everyone pulls their weight. The right way to do it, without all the Eldermen having their say. If we were back in the claim, Osram land, three days argument any time someone wants to hammer in a bolt. Sounds infuriating. Oh, it is. But we like arguing. You need hot air to keep a furnace burning. Still, some traditions aren't up for debate. I would have ended up Petra Forge wife. <laughs> How do you like the sound of that? <laughs> I don't think it fits you. Good answer. That's why I left. I was steel young from the forge then. Could make anything of myself before I cooled in my ways. So you left your homeland and came here? Went to Meridian. Everyone does. Joined the work gangs on the Great Elevator. We finished just as the Mad King got a taste for blood. So I spat and swore I'd find a place for everyone who stuck with me. We lived job to job until the war ended. Then we came upon this old Osram camp. Long abandoned, metal piled up high. A place to start again. A place to leave my mark. <laughs> when I was your age, I thought the lasting mark came from the hardest strike. I suppose you know better now that you're an elder. <laughs> Trade secret. This weapon you're working on, I've never seen anything like it. Your design? Mm, see my face in it, can you? This one's mother helped reclaim Meridian back in the day. A job like that isn't done with strategy. They needed to shake the walls, turn the mad Sun King's army to blood and feathers. What's that face for? Weapons with such power. It's not the weapon, Flame Hair. It's the wielder. If that siege had touched the Great Elevator, they'd have answered to me. Good work, that elevator. Story in every chain link. I'll make you suffer them one day if you like. 
This beast doesn't have a story yet. Too heavy to carry, eats metal like a snap moth. You said you're being pushed out of your territory. Out of the junk heap. A pack of scrappers came snuffling in just after we opened a good SEMA weapon parts. And now we've got a standoff with a gang of bandits at our foundry. They blockaded us out. They're sitting on our power cells. Guess they like shiny things. Well, to finish up our defenses, I need those parts and cells. In and out job. Keep your hands clean. I'm not afraid of getting them dirty. <laughs> Aren't you a blast of air from the bellows? Oh, new side quest. Huh, it's a low level too. Very nice, very nice. All right. Aloy, I know you hunger for answers, as do I. But first, the focus network must be crashed. The Eclipse has agents at Sunfall. If they see you, you'll jeopardize everything we've worked towards. <laughs> we? That we've worked towards? You have been warned. Well, that's certainly ominous. They're not waiting to come home. It's getting dark. She's very pale. Is she unwell? Yes. She's a fighter, but the fever on her won't lift. It only burns hotter. Her name is Shiana. My sister. Isn't there anyone in Sunfall who can help? We're refugees. We know our place. And there's only one healer in the territory. He's... difficult. His soul is in shadow. His... soul is in shadow? Galiv. That's him. He's very clever, but he has little care for people. Perhaps the desert scoured it all away. Perhaps he was always like that. Either way, I know he won't help us. Well, I'll see about that. Where would I find him? Last I heard, he was patching up soldiers at Blazon Arch. Another border battle. I hear folks keep disappearing in the night. Deserters. Okay. So, this is Sunfall. Uh, we can't go here yet because of the quest line. Um, but I did pick up that errand. All right. Let's take the machines out here. This is I'm glad that's over with. Thanks for the help. Loot. I will speak to you after I touched all this loot. Come on over here and have a word. No, loot. Nobody deserves my words. Hey, come on, what are you waiting for? Uh, the loots, that's what I'm waiting for. What, you don't feel like talking? Uh, <laughs> Hold on, buddy, damn. Hey, seriously, we need to talk. Oh my god, okay, hold on. What are you doing out here all alone? Where are your men? I'm not gonna risk their lives. I don't mind putting my worthless ass on the line, but not theirs. Sorry I had to drag you into it. Uh, don't worry. This is just an average day for me. You know, take down some machines, track some killers. Right. I'd hate to see a busy morning for you. Ready to get started? Tell me exactly what happened to Ursa. Start from the beginning. No one knows for sure. She left in the middle of the night with a few of her best men. Her best men? But she didn't bring you? No. I'd been drinking a lot. Or maybe she thought... Ah, uh, damn, I don't know. I couldn't hack it. Search parties found their bodies the next day and the corpses of some shadow carja cowards it was an ambush the shadow carja are animals they, they beat her so bad we can't even show her face before burial oh 
I'm so sorry, Erd. Yeah, well, when I find the soldiers who did this, they'll be sorry too. Are you sure you're all right? Well, I'm sober, so no. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're thinking straight at least. Don't get used to it. You don't have any idea why she left in the middle of the night? No. But it must have been urgent. A message, a report of some new Shadow Karja threat, I don't know. Why would the Shadow Karja do this? Because they hate us. And Ursa most of all. She teamed up with Avad to kick their asses out of Meridian. They've been licking their wounds for two years, but... They finally found a way to get back at her. All right. Show me where Ursa fell, and I'll do what I can to help. Come on, follow me. All right. We do that. Onwards! Why would Ursa come all the way out here? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Is this Shadow Karja territory? No. They broke the ceasefire. Hold on. I finally found that fucker. Been looking for him. Oh, I don't have a lot of metal shards. Never mind. We're holding off on that. This is it, where the ambush happened. Our soldiers have been over it, but maybe that fancy artifact of yours can find a clue or something. Please. I need to find the bastards that did this. All right. A shadow card just here. It's perfectly sharp. Never seen action. There must be shadow card on armor. Strange. Not a scratch on it. Those bloodstains are not the kind that pull around the corpse. They look like smears. Arrows scattered there. They look good as new. Never fired. These look like drag marks. Did someone move a body through here? What do you see there? This stain forms a line. As if blood dripped off the edge of something. Like a cart. See? Cart tracks. I think someone moved the bodies here, then scattered them across the field. Wait. Are you saying the dead found here were killed somewhere else? But why would the Shadow Karja do that? At this point, I'm not taking it for granted that the Shadow Karja are responsible. Of course they were. Well, let's follow these tracks and find out. All right. Let's highlight the track and follow. Missile herbs. Love those. Onwards. Health. Okay. Well, it's pretty obvious he went up this way. Up and around. Where they wanted Ursa dead. Why fake an ambush? There's more to this, and we're going to figure it out. Hey, okay, now we're here. These guys aren't Shadow Karja. 
They're from my tribe, the Asaram. Is this how your people usually greet each other? He's coming for us. Oh shit. We're close. Give it everything you got. You made a big mistake. What's that? I think it's calling in machines. Get ready. Oh shit. I think it's over here and it shot me. Show them how we do It's mad. It's mad. It's very mad. How did that hit me? Oh, you can't attack me while I'm down. Cheating. Oh shit. Oh shit. Don't run from a fight. Okay, run from a fight. I'm sorry. Hey, fucker. You know what? Eat that. Yeah, it shit hurt, don't it? Asaram, not Shadow Karja. Looks like I was wrong about everything, as usual. Please, use that second sight of yours. I have to know what really happened. I'm on it. Okay. Definitely uh, kill their own peoples. That's for damn sure. So much blood. A lot of people died here. A massacre. Huh. Hold on, chill water. It's all the loot. What are those leather straps? Armor straps, cut with a knife. And a rock with blood on it. Those rocks are shattered. Something hit these stones. Something I've never seen before. These look like vanguard weapons. There's no blood on them. Ursus men didn't fight back. Hmm. Looks like you could mount some equipment on that thing. There, by the tripod. A used power cell. There's a supply crate over here. I will grab that. This is Ursus' helmet. I thought she died in the field below, but it must have been here. All this trickery. For what? Feels like it's just a torture me. I have a theory. But it takes a little imagination. So far, your theories are better than other people's facts. All right. I think the Asaram ambushed Ursa and her men with a new weapon. They mounted it, on that tripod up there. It fires waves of force, maybe sound. 
Looks like it cracked the stone there. I think it paralyzes people instead of killing them. It dropped the vanguard right there. No blood on their weapons. No fight. But why paralyze them if you're only gonna move them and gut them? They were trying to hide something. Look here, a bloody rock. That they used to smash Ursa's face in. Or someone else's. These leather straps have been cut. As if they took the armor off someone. Uh, that, that can't be. Her body is, is lying in state in Meridian. I saw it. You said she was unrecognizable. Maybe they switched another body into her armor. Someone around the same size. And mutilated it enough. So it could have been anyone. Even Ursa. Go back to Meridian. Take another look at that body. If it's really Ursa, of course I'm wrong. But if I'm right... Then, then my sister could be alive. I, I, I'm going. Meet me back there when you can. Well, all right. Let us go back and meet Erend. Greetings, Aloy. I am known as Blameless Marad. Please come with me. You are needed for an important consultation. What do you mean? Where's Erend? He's inside, attending the Sun King, where we should be without further delay. Follow me, please. Oh, we get All to meet of these the Sun King. Are here to see the Sun King. Yes, and each has come to ask a favor of him. Unpleasant, but that's politics. The Sun King is eager to meet you. The machine tamer with a curious eye for detail. It's all very intriguing. I'm not here to intrigue you. Too late. First the Oseram gets special treatment, and now Outlanders from the Savage the Sun King. All these people are waiting for the Sun King? I get to skip the line, I'm cool. Onyx, I've been here for two hours. Miss Nora goes to the front of the line. <laughs> Mad as hell. Ignore them. Nobles are like children who whine when they don't get a second helping of dessert. What's the Sun King like? The most important thing is what he isn't like. His father. I think you'll find him to be a reasonable man. Aloy of the Nora, she who sees the unseen. Welcome. It would seem you have done me a great service. Erend, tell her what you found. I, I checked Ursa's tomb. You were right, Aloy. The body is missing a scar below her right knee. I gave it to Ursa when we were kids, fighting over a toy sword. If the body is not Ursa's, then we must assume she is still alive. And I will not abandon her. We only know she was taken, not who took her. I can help with that. Ursa has an enemy among the Oseron. A warlord named Durval. Impossible. Every clan in the claim has been hunting for him since the liberation. He has to be dead by now. No other Oseron had the motive and ingenuity to lure Ursa into this trap. I expect to find him lurking somewhere near the border. I've already sent an agent to investigate. He'll be waiting for word from us at the marketplace in Pitchcliff. I can't move troops to the border without provoking the Oseram, but I could send a few vanguardsmen. And perhaps an exceptionally gifted Nora as well. Errant, Murad, let me discuss it with her privately. I hate to impose further after all you've done, but this is a matter of great importance to me. It sounds like Ursa means a lot to you. Without her Asaram vanguard, I would not have been able to liberate Meridian and end my father's brutal reign. Since then, it has been difficult to maintain peace between our tribes. But Ursa has a way of making her people see reason. So you see, I need her back at my side. And quickly. Who is Durval, exactly? To understand Durval, 
You must first understand my father. He truly thought of himself as a sun god. His mind was broken. He believed that blood sacrifice would solve, well, everything. So he raided the other tribes for victims, especially the Asuran. Durval fought back. He crafted powerful weapons and rallied his people. My father responded with the ultimate cruelty. He captured Durval's wife and daughter and sacrificed them in the Sun Ring. Jesus. So why would Durval go to so much trouble to kidnap Ursa? He felt she betrayed him. She fought by his side until she realized he planned to raise Meridian and butcher its people. Then she came to me. Together, we stopped him and liberated the city from my father. Durval has spent every moment since trying to get revenge. Mostly on the other Asuram who fought with us. He made so many powerful enemies. I thought we'd seen the last of him. I was wrong. The killers who attacked the Nora. I've discovered that they're a faction of Shadow Karja called the Eclipse. They're digging up ancient weapons. Machines that corrupt and control other machines. They want to use them to strike Meridian. What you're saying echoes reports I've received from Marad. A Shadow Karja splinter group. Corrupted machines across the land. When will this attack come, do you know? I'm not exactly sure. And we will do what we can to prepare. But in the meantime, Ursa is my highest priority. Please, help me find her. I'd like to ask you something about the Sundom and its politics. By all means. They call you a sun god who killed his own father in order to unite the tribes in harmony. Is any of it true? They say you can see the invisible, split an arrow at 50 paces, and tame machines at a glance. How much of that is true? It's not too far off. Well, I would like to unite the tribes in harmony, but you saw how many courtiers I have to deal with first. Maybe next week. Quite a place you've got here. You can almost see the little people below the mesa. You don't approve? Well, I have a secret for you. Neither do I. But we must be patient. Change won't come in a single sunrise. But will it happen at all, while men live in palaces? It might. Eventually. If people like you help me bring it about. Your politics seem very complicated. The Asaram are friends, but enemies too? I couldn't have liberated Meridian without the help of Ursa and her Asaram freebooters. Many of them have settled here. But the Eldermen of the Asaram clans and the Claim have become jealous of their success. So have many Karja nobles. It's a volatile situation, especially given the fact that my father raided the Asaram for years. Ursa helps keep the peace, promising a future based on mutual gain. But some, like Durval, will never let go of their venom. What can you tell me about the Shadow Karja? What do they have to do with Ursa? They are remnants of my father's regime, holding out at the fortress of Sunfall to the west. Like him, they care only for domination and seek to draw upon the power of the sun by spilling blood in its name. Since Ursa helped me take this city from them, they were perfect scapegoats. Durval knew this, of course, and planned it well. I need to get going. I know. Well, they say kings should never beg. But please, help me find Ursa. Who says that? Well, Murad, for one. Don't hesitate to ask him or Aaron if you have further questions. All right. Oh, something to read. The founding of Meridian. We are Karja. In us is the blood of those led by Aramon from persecution and pursuit so long ago. Out of the far savage east we came, guardians of a treasure greater than land or metal. 
the leaves of the old ones. Ermond found the leaves in a ruin picked up by a beam of sunlight, and he recognized at once their importance. Within the etch, the first teachings of how to observe the sun, to recognize its guidance, and to understand the place of man. From out of the leaves came the first glyphs, the first writing, so our knowledge could last longer than voices. But when our forefathers offered to share this gift, they were driven out by those they had once called tribesfolk. These ones feared to have the light of knowledge brought to bear on their ignorance, or were jealous of its power. And so began the long wandering of our people, trusting only that the sun would guide them and deliver them from the barbarian tribes. The path was hard, and marked by the stones of families who fell alongside, along the wayside, even Aramon's own. The persecution was unceasing from those without purpose, only the desire to debate and destroy. But the faith of the Karja was rewarded with a distant vision. A tower like a solid ray of the sun holding on the horizon, flashing. Even as their enemies descended upon them, Aramon followed the, the flight of the Glinthawks, leading his people through looming canyons and teeming jungles. Again they saw the tower so close now it seemed to reach the very sun itself, and they saw that the Glinthawks perched upon it. Beheld in the light of the sun, the tower of the spire casts its long shadow upon a mesa across the verdant valley. Aramon knew he had found a haven from the tribe, as this was a place shunned by those without his teaching, or without his face, who cowered from the magnificent magnificence of the spire or the shining feathers of the Glenthawks. He named this place Meridian, from a passage in the leaves and the tribe settled in the protection of the Great Mesa. They found the site was blessed in every respect, carving their cliff, house, cliff houses from the Bontid, Bountinus, Bount, Bountius, I think that's how you say that, <laughs> resources, and in time from the red rock of the mesa itself, crowning it with the first columns of the City of the Sun. Truly the sun gave much to the descendants of our forefathers, granting Meridian great harvest and prosperity in the bounds of the Sundom for as far as it light touched. In time, seeing Meridian shielded us from the dark arrows and plots of our foes, other foreigners brought trade and tribute. Holy Meridian, without spire and sun, there would be no Meridian. But now and furthermore, it stands as monument to both, and the glory of Aramon and the founders is reflected anew in each Sun King as the radiant line in the noble houses of the Sun Court. Okay. What else we got? <clears throat> the Chronicles of the Sun Kings. The founder, Aramon, who guided our forefathers from the shadows of the savage east into the fastness of the Mesa Valley, and who, readings, the signs of sun and shadow both delivered them to the site of Holy Meridian. The Bontanus Amavad, who oversaw the clearing and sawing of the royal maze land so that none who walked in the sun's favor would go hungry again, who cut the back, who cut back the jewel to claim the rich estate lands for the first houses of the sun court. The far-seeing Sadahin, who expanded the sun's domination to the north, south, and east, settling a gate at Bright Market Harbor, and who before the sun at its highest proclaimed these lands would be known as the Karja Sundom, so by the light it was good. Generous Juwadan, who stocked the metal markets with the spoils of his own trampler hunts, and who allowed trade from north and south, even permitted permitting outlanders the gift of the counting glyphs so that they might understand more than simple banter or barter. Zavarad, the pilgrim sun king whose tower was raised to the top of the ridge of Vales and who crossed the great waters of the daybreak to the sundom might extend even further, and to honor this passage had the great blazon arch raised on the far shores. Bold Erev, who saw the sun's passing into the west as a challenge and, for and forged after it was a great army be pushed back three times at the great canyon lands that would be known as the dawn until on the fourth time his cohort broke through and were vanished in the lands beyond prudent basadid who had the mantle of his fallen brother thrust upon him suddenly who ordered the construction of the fortress of sunfall and garrison at blazon arch declaring the land beyond it the forbidden west where only the sun may go Kuvadin, the returner who strove to bring civilization to the savage east, but returned after many strenuous endeavors, saying he was no longer fit for the people of the sun, and called for the building of great towers and walls so this wild land might be observed safely. 
Renan, the Firebird, who saw the Sundom suffer unprovoked attacks by the Tinek Horde, and who, against the protest of his advisors, accompanied his army to confront them. Under the sun, he claimed victory, though he was greatly scarred. He wore his blazon helmet for that day. Nahad, Nahasis, who was a hunter as much as a sun king, and called for the proudest men in the noble houses to prove themselves in the competition beneath the sun. And that though, and that those who fell, the greatest machines will be situated as the first sun hawk and hawks of the hunter's lodge. The illuminated Marzid, who's, who had this. Oh my God. Who the son visited was vision so vivid and grand, he commissioned many statues and frescoes of his visage in Meridian. And for his summer palace and sunfall had a great citadel raised, where he remained painting until he took deathly ill from his own pigments. Evas, elder brother of Marzid, who decreed each family with a suitable male child should submit that child in service of the Sundom's then depleted ranks and had the artisans turn their attention from works of art to outfitting each soldier of the sun with their very finest armor, halberd, and bow. Durand, who in his early years was a strong sun king, defending the sundom from the encroachment of the other tribes and the derangement of the machines, but who became greatly at Adelid and ordered the spilling of much blood in the sun's name, threatened to bring a twilight time upon us. And lastly, we have Avad the Liberator. Obviously, still the... <clears throat> Still the leader. So is it. I think that was it. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave the same path. Cool. All right. Well, that will have to wrap it up for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. When we come back, we will do a... We'll actually continue this quest and then maybe start knocking out some side quests because there's a lot of level 20 side quests so we'll knock them out as well but we need one more skill point and then we'll never have to worry about a mount again which is great it's going to be uh very beautiful um and while i was on my journey to meridian i got the uh terror blaster ammo pouch fully leveled up so all i need now is the blastling which I need a wrap of for. Um, but yep, that'll have to wrap it up for today, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to drop a like, hit subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get alerted when new videos go live. And with all of that out the way, I will see you guys in the next one. Aight. Peace.